Fallen New Vegas came out on October 19th, 2010, and at the time, I did not know much about the game nor the franchise it was a part of. Only when I watched my brother play it uh, did I grow some interest, though not initially. The game looked ugly and very unappealing, but the more I watched my brother play it, the more interesting it looked. The dialogue choices, the characters, and the world drew me in until eventually I played it. From then on, it became my absolute favourite game. Granted, my views of the game have changed since I first played it when I was 10, way too young to understand a very mature game. Then, after a long time of not playing it, I returned to it when I was 17, and it felt like a new game to me. My views on art and real-world politics evolved and I came to a new understanding of New Vegas. There's so much to talk about the game's themes and characters, but one aspect has grabbed my attention the most recently. I view the Legion as a brutal tribe with no redeeming qualities. I still hold that belief. Uh, until I read uh, into political theory and I came to a new understanding of the Legion. They are fascists. You know, indeed, anyone with an inkling understanding of fascism would come to that conclusion. Yet, I didn't want to leave it there. I wanted to do, uh, understand what Obsidian intended for the players to interpret and how the Legion re uh, relate to real-life fascists. So in this video, I will explore the history, the mentality, the culture and the language of the Legion and what makes them fascistic. To understand the Legion, we must first understand what fascism is. By definition, it is a far-right, totalitarian, nationalistic government led by dictatorial power or groups desiring this but not possessing the power to do so. Researching this ideology and form of government, I came to see the Legion as a far more evil faction than they were already demonstrated to be in the game. It is not too unreasonable to effectively compare their actions and even the language they use to the Nazis. Though they don't entirely resemble one another, as Nazis were motivated by racial superiority and the Legion were written to think of themselves as culturally superior, their actions and some of their core philosophy, nonetheless, are something to be compared and evaluated. Caesar, like many real fascist dictators, set into motion how legionaries think of themselves and how to serve the interests of the state and their leader. He sought to create a nationalist mindset where everyone would think of themselves and the state they reside in as morally and spiritually superior. Rome was a highly militarized autocracy that effectively integrated the foreign cultures it conquered. It dedicated its citizens to something higher than themselves, to the idea of Rome itself. In Rome, I found a template for a society equal to the challenges of the post-apocalyptic world, a society that could and would survive, a society that could prevent mankind from fracturing and destroying itself in this new world by establishing a new Pax Romana. It means a nationalist, imperialist, totalitarian, homogenous culture that obliterates the identity of every group it conquers. Long-term stability at all costs. The individual has no value beyond his utility to the state, whether as an instrument of war or production. With nationalism at the forefront, it psychologically altered how every soldier views themselves and everyone else. Many legionaries are from the conquered 86 tribes that fell before the legion, and these tribes could have been similar to raiders, the Khans, or even peaceful tribes trying to survive the harsh wasteland. The Blackfoot tribe, the tribe that became the foundation of the Legion. What was this? The Blackfoot tribe, the tribe that became the foundation of the Legion, were raging a war against many other tribes. This allowed Caesar to take advantage of this and save them from certain destruction, allowing him to become their leader. The Twisted Hares were another who forged an alliance with the Legion, acting as scouts for Caesar's conquest for Arizona. Once they were victorious, they were betrayed and assimilated. Those who resisted were crucified. To ensure unity among his vast army, Caesar needed to strip away their old identities, their beliefs, their morals, and merge them into a new ideology. Since most tribes and people of the wasteland are ignorant of science and history, also pressured by the fear of death, they were brainwashed to believe they were actually saved by the Legion. They were told they lived degenerate lives and were thankful to have been conquered by them. 
To further cement their loyalty to the state and their leader, they were told their new purpose was to rebuild civilization and raise the people out of the ashes of the wasteland, carve out a higher purpose for their existence. It's for the greater good for both humanity and Caesar. But what does this greater good look like in practice? Early on in New Vegas, probably two to four hours into the game, you encounter the Legion for the first time in a shocking display of their ruthlessness. They destroyed a town called Nipton, murdered almost everyone either by burning, beheading, or, in Roman fashion, crucified them to display the enemies of the state. Warpus and Coulter, of Frumentare, is a character you can speak to on why they destroyed Nipton, and it's quite detailed. Opus and his legionaries destroyed Nipton to spread fear throughout the Mojave to demoralize NCR troopers and show what they're willing to do to those they hate. Don't worry, I won't have you lashed to a cross like the rest of these degenerates. It's useful that you have them by. I want you to witness the fate of the town of Nipton, to memorize every detail. And then, when you move on, I want you to teach everyone you meet the lesson that Kaisar's Legion taught here, especially any NCR troops you run across. I am Wolpes Inculta of Kaisar's Legion. I serve my master as the greatest of his Frumentari. We Frumentari are soldiers of a different stripe, capable in battle, but skilled as infiltrators and agents as well. Where to begin? That you are weak and we are strong? This much was known already, but the depths of your moral sickness, your disillusion? Nipton serves as the perfect object lesson. Nipton was a wicked place, debased and corrupt. It served all comers, so long as they paid. Profligate troops, powder gangers, men of the Legion, such as myself, People here didn't care. It was a town of whores. For a pittance, the town agreed to lead those it had sheltered into a trap. Only when I sprang it did they realize they were caught inside it too. Yes, and herded them to the center of town. I told them their sins, the foremost being disloyalty. I told them that when legionaries are disloyal, some are punished, the others made to watch and I announced the lottery. Each clutched his ticket, hoping it would set him free. Each did nothing, even when loved ones were dragged away to be killed. Ha! Innocent. Hardly. Cowardly, though. They outnumbered us, yet not once did they try to resist. They stood and watched as their fellows were butchered crucified and burned, one by one. They stood and hoped their turn would not come. Each cared only for himself. To legionaries, outsiders are dissolute, people who lack morals. The profligates are hostile dissolutes, a term used mostly to describe the NCR. To the legion, both are degenerate. Degeneracy, a decline in morality, is a commonly used term by fascists and other types of authoritarians to describe their enemy and the perceived impurity of society. The question has to be asked then, what constitutes as a degenerate society to a fascist? It's typically groups who don't fit in or who oppose heteronormative ideals. Examples are homosexuality, trans people or feminists. Women in the eyes of the Legion are not meant to be in their ranks because in their view, it goes against the natural law of hierarchy between men and women. They would argue that any society that treats women more equal is degenerate. In their misogynistic beliefs, the role of women are to be mere breeding machines to birth new soldiers because in this fascistic patriarchy, that is the only role women are ever allowed to serve. Patriarchy gender roles of men are brought up believing they will be the sole protectors and providers of the family and in times of increasing economic anxiety, men can feel a loss in this role and status due to gender equality. Fascists will use this perceived threat of social status and distort that gender equality goes against the natural law of hierarchy. 
The Legion, while in its current state, is to increase its soldier population, and the soldiers themselves don't desire to create a traditional family, their sexual anxiety is nevertheless prevalent. Legionaries would find the idea of women fighting at their side would lead to the collapse of society. Another thing that constitutes as a degenerate society for them is the fact that their enemy, the other, a term scholars and historians used best describe how fascists view their mortal enemy and how fascists go about manipulating the public to think their enemy is eternally weak and on the verge of collapse but at the same time overwhelmingly powerful and on the brink of victory. It's contradictory but it doesn't matter to them, it's a fascist recruitment method. The Nazis viewed Jews as the other, the people who brought degeneracy to Germany and the ones who backstabbed them in the First World War. This rhetoric is obviously irrational, it's nonsense and not backed up by any evidence whatsoever, and that's the point. It's not meant to make sense. You create a scapegoat for the country's problems, it gets people to focus on a common enemy, distracted from the real problems, which leads them to become supportive of fascism. Fascists blame minorities and other groups to create solidarity and support, which is reflected in Caesar's legion. So the other to the legion is the new California Republic. Not only does their disdain for others motivate them in their destructive pursuit, but social Darwinism likely plays a role too. Through its use in history, fascists have used Darwin's theory to apply to the survival of a superior race of people and mischaracterize what Darwin intended in his theory. It is a delusional attempt to rationalize their racism or xenophobia. The Legion is though not concerned with skin color, so a social Darwinian approach can only be applied to their admiration of strength and discipline. Alcohol and all chems, including stims and other addictive items. I know not why Kaisar would wish to speak with such a physically inferior whelp, but I will allow this one exception. You may bear Kaisar's mark, but do not attempt to share any of your medicine with anyone in the fort. Strength in the Legion is not just physical strength, but strong leadership capabilities and the will of the people to serve their emperor and the state. Only through strength can society survive. This view then extends to people outside the Legion. They extrapolate that because outsiders are immoral and lack discipline, they are the reason why civilization hasn't been rebuilt and brought order to the wasteland. So when people are kidnapped by them and enslaved, the elderly and men too old to be fully indoctrinated are outright killed because they were hindered the Legion's cause. It is a purification approach to weed out attributes they've deemed undesirable and causes for degeneracy. But for successful communities that have expanded, given people the chance to live better lives and are truly rebuilding civilization like the new California Republic, they had to rationalize this and say because they are a democracy, they are susceptible to corruption and degeneracy. It's almost paradoxical and purposely designed to keep you loyal to an extreme reactionary ideology. There is a video by ContraPoints, our queen, the actual queen of Great Britain, uh, that covers the history and the concept of, of, of degeneracy. And I, I recommend watching that because I'm really too lazy to cover any, any of it further. So um, go give it a watch, it's really good. <laughs> One of the most important aspects that fascists utilize to gain support is by mythologizing the past. This is a tool that every fascist has used. Caesar's legion is based off the Roman Empire, aesthetically and militarily. Though not everything down to the core of the legion resembles the real Roman Empire, this is where mythologizing the past comes into play. Josh Sawyer, director of Fallout New Vegas, explained best. Caesar takes whatever pieces of history he finds useful and disregards things he doesn't find useful. He has specific goals and uses history as a tool to meet those goals. When history doesn't help him, he doesn't use it. Even things like our reluctance to use advanced technology have more to do with his desire to keep the Legion ignorant and dependent on him than with anything historical. Control is very important to him, even if it means that the people who serve him lack any of the medical knowledge necessary to help diagnose or treat his problems. It's very important for Caesar to maintain that the Legion is different. It is physically different, has different values and different priorities. When Romans were wearing pants, they thought people wearing skirts were barbarians. When Romans were togas, they thought people wearing pants were barbarians. People on the other side of that river wear pants. 
Our identity is good. Your identity is bad. Keep in mind, though, legionaries are ignorant of the existence of the Roman Empire. They believe the principles and goals of the legion came from Caesar directly, not from old history books detailing the fall of the Roman Empire. But isn't that interesting? Caesar wanted to follow examples and took aspects of the Roman Empire, glorifying the imperialism, the conquest, Julius Caesar, but ignoring the fact that it all fell apart eventually. Probably it doesn't matter to him, or he hasn't given him much credence. Caesar has engaged in rewriting how the Great War occurred. Instead of a nuclear war, Mars, a mythical god, destroyed the world and allowed Caesar to rule over the Earth. While Caesar himself doesn't believe what he made up, for the members of his legion who are either indoctrinated from birth onwards or who have never received any serious education, this is a satisfactory explanation, both for the state of the world as well as the totalitarian hierarchy of the legion society, cementing its dictator's position as not just a war chief or emperor, but as an actual god. In a way, cleansing the world of degeneracy becomes a religious calling, Plenty of Wastelanders throughout the game series knows that the world ended in nuclear fire because there was no need to peddle lies. No one would benefit from denying the Great War when you're just trying to survive the apocalypse. But when a society like Caesar's Legion exists within Fallout, when all loyalty is placed in a single individual, and when that single individual is seen as the conveyor of truth, then the people no longer care about truth. They willingly submit to their leader and are content to live in an unreality where the truth is determined by the powerful. The past is Caesar's vessel for control and a way forward for his legion. This isn't unique nor unusual for fascists to engage in mythologizing the past. Fascist regimes of the 20th century and modern neo-fascists heavily mythologize and propagandize the past and it ranges far and wide. Italian fascists and Nazis have used periods in history as far back as ancient Greece and the Roman Empire to present them as glorious pasts of humanity and show how civilization has degenerated since then. Using the Nazis to illustrate my point, they mythologized the past but not to the point where they wanted to emulate any of it. They wanted to use some old aspects of history to create a new society. They would take old architecture, old styled works of art, the ideals of conquest and hierarchy to set forth a new world. It sounds ludicrous how anyone would find this appealing, but yet it worked in Nazi Germany. Of course it only worked because the Wall Street crash happened. Germany lost the First World War not long before the Great Depression ensued, so this country was yet again hit hard. People lost their jobs, people became poor, and the future looked uncertain. Given people's situation back then, they wanted solutions to fix this turmoil. So when economic inequality worsens, it creates a breeding ground for extremism to arise. The Nazi party could have been laughed off had the crash never happened, but they started to look appealing to the people. Even when the Nazis engaged in intimidation, violence and murder, people became more supportive of them because they evoked national pride of race and history and made promises to pave the way to a much greater country than had ever been seen in history. It's much easier to appeal to people's emotions than to engage in the truth. Shifting to another infamous fascist to illustrate another point, Benito Mussolini made in a speech at the Fascist Congress of Nepal was that, We have created our myth. The myth is a faith, a passion. It is not necessary for it to be a reality. It is a reality in the sense that it is a stimulus, is hope, is faith, is courage. Our myth is the nation. Our myth is the greatness of the nation. And to this myth, this greatness, which we want to translate into a total reality, we subordinate everything else. Edward Salo, Caesar, very much like every other fascist dictator, was born into the society that he viewed as broken and needed to be violently changed or eradicated. That society was the New California Republic, built upon the democratic principles and the capitalist system of the world before the Great War. Despite appearing at first glance a utopian, nuclear-powered, high-tech society, Pre-war America and many other capitalist countries were falling apart due to a lack of resources like petroleum and uranium, causing the resource wars. 
greed, nationalism, and imperialism. These were the driving forces that pushed the world to war and the end of civilization. Despite all these problems the old world had, this is the society the NCR is emulating. While their initial success is undeniable, it is bringing back those old world problems. 20th century fascists and neo-fascists inhibit the same traits of recognizing that problems exist, sometimes legitimate problems, but more often than not through a xenophobic, nationalistic lens and to capitalize off of them and the people's fears. Their solution? To create a totalitarian state and change the culture to be whatever they believe it should be. For backstory, Caesar was taught by the followers of the apocalypse and was educated. Unlike many other wastelanders, he had a huge advantage when it comes to education, literacy, science, maths, etc. Instead of working on a farm, working as a gunman for hire, he's able to look at the NCR and see its problems and also non-problems. What I mean by non-problems is that, well, he views democracy as insufficient, completely unworkable. So way before he teetered towards fascist rhetoric, he was already leaning towards authoritarianism. This all stemmed from how he was raised to venerate the second president of the NCR, Tandy, one of the most admired presidents of the NCR's lifetime. After her death, after many years of trying to peacefully expand and rebuild the wasteland, NCR was becoming bureaucratic and imperialistic and falling for the same mistakes as the old world. For far-right people, they typically see only a few people worthy of leading society and that the people are not capable of making the right decisions. Reasons for these beliefs widely stem from a variety of things. They can be purely racial, maybe religious, or related to class and upbringing. For Caesar, he saw strong individuals as the pioneers to lead forth humanity to enlightenment, and following the death of Tandy and his eventual rise to power, his philosophy in his mind was proven right. He saw democracy leading the downfall of the NCR, causing its corruption, and was only ever sufficient under a strong leader. It can be understood that democracy has its good and bad points. Democracy can fail when people don't have the high education that the wealthy can afford and are misinformed by blatant propaganda and vote against their own interests to or for the interest of the majority, or even without considering the long-term consequences. On the other hand, democracy has the power to vote out corrupt politicians and make decisions that can improve the lives of everyone rather than the elites. This is one reason why fascism would never have democracy under its wing. Fascism is anti-democracy. As examined before, Caesar claimed he is the son of a god to create absolute royalty among his legionaries and created a cult of personality where one worships and has unquestioning praise for their leader. His soldiers then are willing to die for their god, killing themselves without hesitation if there's a chance of capture by their enemy. Most of them at least. While recognizing a lot of what he says is nonsense, he does believe he is destined to take on this task of rebuilding civilization and even sees parallels between himself and Julius Caesar. The crossing of the Rubicon River that Julius Caesar and his army marched through sparked the Roman Civil War, where Julius triumphed and became a dictator. Caesar, the one from the game, sees the Hoover Dam as his Rubicon, the NCR as the corrupt Roman Senate, and New Vegas as his Rome. So while he doesn't see himself as a literal god, he does believe he's special and above everyone. I was taught it was my responsibility to bring the torch of knowledge to the waste. I may have taken the torch part more literally than they intended. Probably his emphasis on finding parallels of his conquest for the Mojave and Julius Caesar might stem from his stance on the Hegelian dialectics. For those who don't know, Hegelian dialectics is a three-stage development where you first have a thesis, the Legion is the thesis and the driving force to combat the problem, the antithesis. The NCR would be that since they ideologically oppose the Legion, and the synthesis, the thing that will reconcile both the thesis and antithesis. The Legion is insufficient in rebuilding civilization in its current form, but if they were able to beat the NCR and assimilate it, Caesar would set his eyes on transforming his Legion from a nomadic tribe to a legitimate empire. But is this really what Caesar wants? Does he truly believe he needs New Vegas to establish a real empire? Is there more to his character? One thing Caesar is most afraid of is being discovered as a liar. Everything he had built, everyone who worships him, is all based on lies. He is afraid of the truth getting out because if his soldiers found out who he really was, his legion would fall apart. 
He needs New Vegas to set himself apart from other barbaric war chiefs of the wastes to be a standing, culturally homogenistic, autocratic society that would take the steps to rebuild civilization through violence and genocidal measure. This way, no one will stand against him, no one to challenge him. There will be him and him alone with absolute power over the lives and minds of everyone. Until the determining battle, the second battle of Hoover Dam, he has to keep a tight lid on what his people think of him. The first battle of Hoover Dam was embarrassing for him and he had to set an example of what failure leads to. Joshua Graham, the first legate and one of the founding fathers of Caesar's Legion, led the failed battle. To set his example on the top leading commander of the whole legion, Graham was set on fire and cast down the Grand Canyon. Now Joshua though survived certain death and Caesar soon discovered this. To maintain control and faith in their leader, Caesar made certain that no one even slaves mentioned Joshua's real name and simply referred to him as the Burned Man to downplay his significance to a mere legend, almost creating the idea that he had no real importance to the Legion. Allocating Joshua to a mere legend will eventually erase him from history since new legionary recruits will come in and out until no one remembers him at all. Once again, he's mythologizing the past and changing the way language is used to exert control. I think that would put him, and you, in a difficult position. Caesar has agents looking for me, but he won't admit I'm alive. And even if you killed me, he can't acknowledge that. To do so would be to admit I had never died, that Caesar made a mistake. No, he lives by his lies and shall die by his lies. There is no escaping it. Fiction, no matter how fantastical it can be, is a reflection of the world and of the people we live alongside. Since the time of the caveman drew animals on the walls and of the Greek myths, uh, humans have always told each other stories that can be interpreted in different ways. Stories can elicit ideas that can emotionally move us and affect us in ways that are hard to describe. Sometimes ideas are meant to be explored, either to be challenged or questioned. One book I read not too long ago that emotionally affected me was Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Empathy was a central core element of the story and the message of the book. The front cover actually asks you a question before you open it. Do androids dream of electric sheep? Living things can dream. It's not just a human trait. And if androids were real and could dream, doesn't that actually make them living things? Or at least people? This is the power of storytelling to evoke ideas and people and perhaps see the world in a new light. Stories have always had messages, whether intentional or unintentional. For Fallen Vegas, the Legion can be seen as some sort of lesson we can learn from. Besides from the obvious message that totalitarianism kind of sucks and murder is bad, um, there is much more to them. We can see how a lack of education can be uh, weaponized by authoritarians to control people's lives. We can see how fascists dehumanize outsiders because they're different. We can see how a government like the NCR fails to protect the people and primarily focuses on imperialist expansion and potentially creates uh, far-right extremist groups in response. Works of art are a reflection of reality and the beliefs of storytellers. Art and reality are not two separate things. They are both intertwined. Uh, some stories have obvious political agendas like To Kill a Mockingbird and Animal Farm, but others don't have agendas but are still political by the very nature of its story. Fallen New Vegas, by the very nature of its own story, is political. The way it handled the Legion and its fascistic ideology shone a light and a way to see how people would fall down this path. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I would like to actually uh, thank my friend Pascal on Twitter, who actually helped uh, write the script for this video. Uh, without him, it would have been very difficult to actually, uh, well, actually finish it off. And also, I would like to thank this, uh, the guy who wrote How Fascism Works, uh, uh, what is it, Jason Stanley. Um, that actually helped me a great deal to actually uh, figure out what makes the Legion tick. And I hope you stick around because I'm hoping to actually, you know, make more videos. So, see ya.